Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ask Grit, episode number 44. Every single week we get together around this time, uh, typically 5 p.m. We are about 10 minutes late today uh, with one of our own team members to answer the weekly questions we get by our property investors so that it can add value to you. So that's the whole purpose of this program. Um, it's it's going to be quick, 15, 20 minutes, just answering the questions so that you can pick up some uh, golden nuggets, hopefully. Here we have uh, Gunit from our Melbourne team. How are you doing, Gunit? Good night. How are you? Very good. Very good. Sorry, I'm late. I was late. Uh, but caught, 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 caught up the Zoom call. Nice. Okay. So we've got, got a lot of questions. I think most of the questions we got from last week uh, session that we had with the investors in Melbourne. Yeah. So I think it will be beneficial for all of them if we if I ask them now. Yeah. So we got about eight questions, eight to ten questions. So the first one is, uh, can you take the investors through the factors that great property look when recommending a suburb or a particular project? Yes. Um, we we look at we look at few things. We look at. Uh, the factors or the growth factors in a city, city meaning a main capital city can be Melbourne, Sydney, Canberra, or Brisbane, or Adelaide, or Perth for that matter. Then we go uh, dig deep into the suburb. Uh, we go into the suburb level and have a look at all the other growth factors for that particular suburb. Then we, uh, once we pick a suburb, then we go into the each area where the property is located. So it's a, a very detailed analysis which we do. But, uh, answer the questions that's the, that's at a high level and then typically we go through about 35 data points of the suburb then another probably 15 points to pick the right area or the location in a project just to give an example a uh, few main things we are looking for is the rental yield over the past 10 years in that suburb we look at the capital appreciation for the past 10 years we also look at the renter percentage how many renters are there as opposed to own occupiers. That will give you a clear indicator how soon you can rent it out. Then we also look at statistics like vacancy rate, um, apply to demand ratios. So all these all these elements have to be in the sweet spot. And uh, that's what we look for. And then once we, that's only four or five things I mentioned, but we go through a whole lot of details when picking a suburb. Uh, and also, when we when it comes to the location of the property, uh, location is we always say location, location, location. We look at um, cases like flood zones, uh, uh, bushfire prone areas, and then uh, if there are communities who is who has leaves around things like feng shui and key junctions and things like that. Uh, the, the land is which uh, which aspect is it is it facing north and east a lot of people a lot of communities prefer because of the morning sun yeah. um go into a whole lot of details into those and then we recommend a plot or a property based on the location or the estate so it's a quick snapshot but we uh we go through a lot of detail in selecting a suburb as well as property yeah, so basically we don't look at the train station or the school, whereas we go into the, all the factors in recommending a suburb. Exactly. Right. I mean, train stations, schools, all the amenities are important. That's but yeah. just one aspect of it. One aspect, yeah. yeah. So the next one is, uh, how does grid property help investors to grow their portfolio once they have bought their first property? So this is quite important. Like most of our customers are repetitive customers. So... Uh, we help them to grow their portfolio. So the question is, how do we help the investors to grow their portfolio? Yeah, I mean, it all uh, boils down to the question why they, why they want to do it. Uh, everybody has a reason to grow their wealth, uh, secure their families or whatnot. So we go into the why. We, uh, we formulate a strategy for them by identifying their goals, uh, five to 10 to 15, 30 goals. And then uh, we identify all potential issues they have 
current issues they have, and then we come up with a strategy. So it all boils down to the strategy, uh, which they want to go down that path. Of one, one family might want three properties, and one family might want about three, four properties, and they're happy with it. And it all boils down to their goals. So we iron that out first, and then we come up with a plan to uh, achieve that. And how we get there is the easy part. But identify the why, identify the strategy is the most important part. I think that's uh, that's the missing piece for a lot of investors. If you just take a step back and understand why, and how piece is it very very easy. Yeah. So it's like we create a blueprint to the investors so they can exactly. keep it handy. Right. Exactly. So the next one is. Uh, could you explain the services provided to investors and how does grit property differentiate from other competitors in the market? Yeah, I mean, with us, uh, uh, number one is our clients comes first, uh, whatever it is, and uh, clients as well as their goals and dreams. And we, we uh, our service is catered around that. And in terms of the services, it's not about uh, selling a property based on the stock we have. It's about what they want to achieve and then we will find the stock. Uh, we have a variety of stuff. We have we have no limits in the stock. Uh, our stock is not an issue. So it's not about selling a property. It's about uh, servicing them to achieve their goals and dreams. Uh, so I mean, in terms of services, uh, so we look at uh, why they want to do it. We look, come up with a strategy. Uh, we get give them the best uh, property options, we give them the best price because if you can buy well, you're going to create, I mean, it, the, when the property appreciates, you're going to make a make a lot of wealth. So that's very important. And then, uh, we service them right throughout. Um, uh, we pride ourselves in our customer service. We always check on them. Uh, we service them like crazy. And uh, other thing is in terms of services, we take care of the rentals, we take care of the property management. Um, we don't go out of the way to help our clients achieve their dreams. And that's the key differentiator. And that is the feedback we have been getting from our clients uh, as well. So I'm gonna add on to that, I mean, there's so much praise uh, from your clients too. So yeah. So what we are good at, uh, that's our key differentiator. We are extremely good at what we do. Yeah, that's great. And the feedback that we have got is phenomenal. So that, that speaks a lot. Uh, the other thing is that it's a, it's a very good question. Um, can you walk us through the importance of rental yields and importance of why you should buy at the lowest point in the market? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. Uh, a lot of people think uh, you got to pick between either rental yield or the capital appreciation, which is not true. You can find properties where you get a decent rental yield as well as capital appreciation. Um, the common um, thing which a lot of people think is if I want to get rental yield, let me get an apartment. If I want to get um, capital appreciation, let me buy a house, which is not true. Uh, I mean, there are houses where you can get a very, very decent rental yield. So in terms of rental yield, why it's important is that is the cash, that is how you can get your cash flow going. If your cash flow will have a hit, there's no point in the property appreciation, not that there's no point, it will help you. But then again, you got to, um, property uh, investing is a marathon. You, you got, if you're holding on for the, for the, for, for the next 10, five, five to 10 to 15 years, you got to service the loans through the rentals. And the interest rates can go up and down. At the same time, you have to make sure the rents keep going up as well. So the rental yield, will play a vital role in maintaining your cash flow position. Ideally, you've got to be cash flow positive so that you have no burden on your, you don't have to put your earned income into your investment properties. So that's the main reason. So maintain your cash flow, rental yield is extremely important. Yeah, that's great. I mean, add on to it, like the, all the investors or whoever was watching, they can join our uh, webinar so we can we can give more information on how to maximize their yields yeah uh, the next question is uh, this most question like we uh, 
asked like a lot of investors, how does grid property help investors to purchase existing properties? Because most of them think that we only service to buy ex new properties, but we also work as buyers advocates, right? Would you be able to explain how we operate in yeah, that? Yeah, um, I mean, there, there are certain scenarios once we come up with a strategy for each and every investor. Uh, some people, uh, now we tend to uh, go with brand new properties. That is our strength. The reason being there's a lot of benefits for investors going in brand new properties, especially a lot of tax advantages um, and less headaches and so forth. But then again, there can be a person who has already taken advantage of the tax advantage. They have already have three, four investment properties which were taken as brand new, they're getting a good tax return. They're paying a lot of tax, but they're getting good tax return. So they have already taken care of it. In that case, we do we do recommend going for established homes in really good suburbs where there's a really good positive cash flow coming in. Uh, again, what we do is we put our system in place uh, with the 3250 data point, check every element of it, give them reports, educate them on why they should be looking at particular suburbs, and then we find the properties for them. And we charge a service fee for that based on the location, based on the state. Uh, but that can definitely be done. Uh, but the service, it's 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 a bit different than, than a buyer's agent. It's uh, it's that service. Once you go through that data points, uh, people get blown away because you simply cannot go wrong once you have a look at that. So it's not like we are just working as a buyer's agent. We we basically help the investor to select the right property at the right price. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the next is. Uh, how do you oversee property market in the next uh, six to 18 months? What are the negatives and positive outcomes do you foresee? Yeah, so we, already see, we, are, we are seeing uh, some of the steam we had last year is uh, dying down a bit, but still the market is hot. The estates are selling well, uh, the land estates are selling well, even the local real estate agents are selling well, but the steam we had has gone down a bit. That's the feedback we have been getting. Uh, I mean, right now, uh, things which are happening globally, we have the Russian war coming up, we have the inflation going up the roof in uh, most of the countries. Um, but I think the inflation in Australia will also has to rise because especially the oil prices are going up at a rate. And this economically, uh, economically, uh, the interest rates has to go up. Having said that, interest rates should not go up dramatically because it's, not, it's going to harm the economy much, much more. So I think the next six to 18 months will be interesting. Uh, uh, property market might be stagnant a bit. It will slow down a bit, but I don't see it going down at all, especially because, um, especially with the Russian situation, it's, uh, I mean, uh, our hearts are with, uh, uh, people who are in uh, in in, uh, in in that part of the world, but uh, in that global, if it becomes a global crisis, uh, anywhere in the world, investors will hold on to their real estate and gold, and that's what they are going to hold on to. So uh, there will be undersupply of properties coming into the market because nobody is going to sell if it becomes a crisis like that. So the market is never going to go down. Uh, it will be stagnant, uh, but uh, it will slow down in the next six to 18 months. Yeah, great insight. And next is, again, a ripple effect of that. Uh, will the interest rates uh, have an impact on the market? How does it affect the off-the-plan properties and the existing properties? No, it will definitely have an impact because uh, it's all depending on the borrowing power. Right now, uh, uh, cash rates at 0.1%, interest mm -hmm. rates are all time low and people love to borrow. There's very cheap money out there. Interest rates, but interest rates won't rise. I wouldn't think more than 0.5 to 0.75 basis points. So uh, even if it rises, it's not a big deal. I mean, we have been, uh, the worst has been 17% interest rates in Australia in 1991. So, uh, even 11%, 10%, we won't be anywhere near such high interest rates. So worst case, it might be around four and a half, five percent 5% at most, which is still affordable for most investors. And uh, 
it's not going to be a, I mean, when the interest rate rises, typically the market has to slow down. That's that that has been the case. And that's quite normal. That's part of the normal property cycle. And that is exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. The last questions, I mean, this question was repetitive from most of our uh, investors. Uh, could you explain where do grit investors recently invest these days and why? Um, most people are investing in Adelaide and Brisbane right now. Uh, the reasons, um, those markets are uh, really good, uh, really good entry price point, really good factors for the growth in the next five to 10 years. There's mining booms happening in Adelaide. There's Olympics coming up in Brisbane. Uh, and also uh, some parts of Melbourne, uh, which are really, really developing. So with our system we have in place, uh, you simply cannot go wrong. We know where the growth is going to happen. We know how the rental is. Uh, we know the stats in and out. Uh, just apply the system and then recommend suburbs to our investors. So that's where most of the people are investing right now. Great, great insight. I think that's all we've got. Um, I think thanks let a lot me, for all the yeah, Let's see if we have anything else. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, one more question. With the current situation, do you think the market in Sydney will slow down? I think it will, uh, but it doesn't look like uh, anytime soon. Uh, the market is still pretty hot over there, but with the next, I would say, 12 to 18 months, it should slow down, it should stagnate a bit, and then it'll come back up. Uh, later on but um i feel sydney is at the peak right now so if you're getting into the market you might be better off investing in adelaide or brisbane or parts of melbourne or victoria yep another one um how about the rental yield in canberra do you think this will go down with uh in the next 12 months? I don't think so. Canberra is a dominant market. It's, it's an extremely good market for rental yields. You're looking at six to seven percent yields. And it has been the case uh, right throughout. And the reason for that is there is an undersupply of apartments, especially or the unit in Canberra. And uh, there's so much of demand. We, we typically rent out apartments over there in days rather than weeks. Uh, so there's so much of demand over there. Um, so there's significant undersupply in Canberra. The income rate is almost double of Melbourne. You're looking at 85,000 per annum average income. So the fundamentals are extremely strong and uh, it has been the best rental yield for the past year and still it is in the in whole of Australia. So I really don't think the rental yield will have an impact over there in the next 12 months. Yeah. And there was another question raised uh, as well. What do you think the borders opening in Australia and uh, how will it impact the market? Yeah, borders opening up uh, is, a, is a great thing. Uh, I mean, everyone who's coming in, the flights are uh, it's a, it's a chuck a block. Uh, it's all packed up. So people are moving in, students are moving in. We've already seen the rents have risen. Rent, the vacancy rate have gone from 11% in Melbourne to two, below 2%. So that will tell you uh, what sort of impact it has had so far. And it will continue to rise. I mean, we just opened the borders two weeks ago. And uh, students are coming. A lot of uh, investors are moving in. Investors are coming in. So it will have a big impact on the investor market. Uh, Regardless of the first home buyer market, investor market is definitely going to rise. Yeah, great insight. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, all right, thank you so much for listening. In um, as Gunit said, we do a number of webinars, a uh, number of events, physical events, webinars uh, right across the country as well as overseas. 
Um, we have a few events happening in Sri Lanka. We have one happening in India in, in April. Uh, then we are off to UAE internationally. Uh, at the same time, uh, we'll be having another event. We had a really successful event last uh, last week, I think it was. Yeah, last week, yeah. And then uh, we'll be having another one uh, on towards the end of March, uh, another physical event in Melbourne, as well as there'll be a webinar happening next week or week after as well. But watch us uh, on our social media channels. It will be there. You can't miss it. Yeah. Yeah, so watch out for the space and yeah, so we'll keep you informed. If you have any queries or information you want to ask, yeah, do not hesitate to reach us. We'll be there to help you. Absolutely. Until we see you next week. Uh, take care. Have a good weekend. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.